good day everyone so in this session we'll discuss about uh, how to draw polar plot uh, what is the significance of polar plot and why we need in uh, control system uh, and all the aspects of polar plot which is required for determining the gain phase plotting the gain curve phase curve so this is required in polar plot so what is polar plot basically when uh, we want to find out the gain and phase and to plot it with respect to omega when omega varied from 0 to infinity so that determines your uh, your polar plot so in polar plot basically uh, let's say g of s is your uh, transfer function and uh, if you can find its uh, magnitude by putting s is equal to j omega and uh, and if you can find out its phase let's say g of j omega the phase so when we plot the magnitude and and phase with respect to frequency when omega varies from 0 to infinity so that phase and gain curve with respect to angular frequency constitute the polar plot so polar plot can be plotted in normal graph paper also it can be plotted in the polar graph paper so what is the basic uh, way and determining the polar plot and how we can plot uh, that is the whole idea of this session so let's consider a example here we'll directly go to the uh, example here so let's consider a polar plot or uh, to uh, to uh, to draw the polar plot for g of s is equal to 10 into s plus 1 divided by s plus 10 okay so in the numerator we have 10 s plus 1 and in the denominator we have s plus 10 the first and foremost thing we have to do for polar plot we have to put s is equal to j omega so when we put s is equal to j omega so your g of j omega will be 10 j omega plus 1 divided by j omega plus 10 right then we have to find its magnitude so what is the magnitude of g of j omega so it is 10 square root of 1 plus omega square divided by square root of omega square plus 100 but it just as you know if it, it is a complex number then its magnitude will be square root of real part of square plus imaginary part of square right in this denominator what is the real part this is one what is the imaginary part omega right in the denominator like this with the real part is 10 and the imaginary part is omega right similarly when we find out the phase so as you know uh, so this is uh, the, comp the complex number so if you can find its uh, its uh, phase that for the denominator it will be tan inverse 10 divided by 10 omega right sorry uh, tan inverse 10 omega divided by 10 right so 10 10 cancel out so it will be tan inverse omega minus tan inverse omega by 10 why it is minus because 10 plus j omega in the denominator so this is your phase part so g of j omega is equal to tan inverse omega minus tan inverse omega by 10 right then what we have to do next so in this cases we have to vary the omega from 0 to infinity okay so we can take some omega value starting from 0 so first point has to be uh, omega and last value has to be infinity okay so here i am taking some values let's say omega is equal to 0 1 3.16 4 7 10 20 50 100 200 and at the end you can take infinity also okay so for better uh, uh, determining the polar plot uh, if you can take as many as points then it will be very good for plotting your polar plot so let's say 10 20 points so it will be very good for plotting your polar plot so for the safer side better to take 10 points starting from omega is equal to 0 and the end point has to be infinity and in between that you can vary your points okay 
just like let's say I can take omega is equal to 0, then 1, then omega is equal to 2, then omega is equal to 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, then infinity. Okay. Then what we can do after taking the omega val value, we have to find its magnitude. What is m? m is the magnitude. And what is phi? Phi is your phase. Right. So that m magnitude and phase value, we have to put it here. So this is your m g of j omega mod and this is your phi that is your phase that is tan inverse omega minus tan inverse omega by 10 right then after putting the omega value for different uh, different uh, values of omega value we have to find the magnitude as well as phase just like for example if we put omega is equal to 0 Let's say if we put omega is equal to 0, then what is your magnitude? It will be. If we put omega is equal to 0, then it will the magnitude will be 1, right? And if we put omega is equal to 0 in G, uh, find out the phase, then what will be tan inverse 0 minus tan inverse 0? So it will be 0, right? Similarly, you can take for different values of omega and you can find the magnitude. Okay. After finding out the magnitude and phase for different values of omega, then you put it in a uh, in a proper form that is called m cos phi plus j m sin phi. Now this is taken for finding out the your polar coordinates. So this is m cos phi is your real part and m sin phi is your imaginary part. So if you can put this value, then you can get this. Uh, you can get the polar coordinate just like that for omega is equal to 0 your magnitude is 1 phase is 0 degree so what is your m cos phi plus j m sin phi 1 plus j 0 right so what is your polar coordinate here 1 0 right similarly if you take 1 omega is equal to 1 that is omega is equal to 1 radian per second then your magnitude is 1.41 uh, phase is 39.29 degree and uh, m cos phi plus j m sin phi is 1.09 plus j 0.89. So your real part is 1.09 and imaginary part is 0.89. Okay. So this is this this way we can find the uh, polar coordinates here. After putting the polar coordinates here, we can plot it on the graph paper. So your polar plot will look like this. So this is your x-axis is your real real axis. And your y axis is your imaginary axis. Okay. So if you can see, we can we have we put different we plot this graph for different values of omega. Okay, just like is omega is equal to 1, omega 3, omega 4, omega equal to 7, omega 10, omega 20, omega 50, omega 100. So different values of omega, we put this, we can we can draw the coordinates. So this coordinates is your polar coordinate. One and where we can get these coordinates from here from this table just like that here for omega is equal to 0 your coordinates is 1 0 for omega is equal to 1 what is your coordinates 1.09 and 0 0.89 for omega is equal to 4 what is your coordinates 2.24 and 3.106 like this we can plot and this constitute your polar plot okay let's take another example Let's consider a unity feedback system which has open loop transfer function is uh, g s is equal to s plus 2 divided by s plus 1 and s minus 1. Now here it is asking using use Nyquist criteria to determine the system stability. So in this case is, uh, we have to plot the Nyquist plot and after that we have to find out the system stability. But we have to remember that before plotting before we plot Nyquist plot we have to first plot the polar plot first. Okay, we have to plot the polar plot. Then after that, we can plot the Nyquist plot. And from the Nyquist plot, we can determine the system stability. So the same process we have to adopt. So we will put S is equal to J omega. So when you put S is equal to J omega, it will be 2 plus J omega divided by 1 plus J omega, then minus 1 plus J omega. Okay, so this is your G of J omega. Then what is your magnitude? So G of J omega, so that is equal to square root of omega square plus 4 divided by 
square root of omega square plus one square root of omega square plus one okay the so simple we have to use the magnitude here and how to find out phase this is the phase tan inverse omega by two minus tan inverse omega by one minus tan inverse omega by minus one now here i uh, i have uh, illustrated in a way how to find out your phase phase is very important while determining the uh, while determining the uh, uh, phase of any uh, transfer function okay because in this cases while find while uh, plotting your polar plot we need to know what is your magnitude and phase so as i said uh, we have to put j omega in, in the transfer function and after putting j omega we, then we can find out the phase but we need to know your uh, your uh, your complex number right your complex number is situated in which quadrant right if it is situated in the first quadrant what is your phase is tan inverse y by x right if it is put in the second quadrant then it is pi minus tan inverse y by x if it is in the third quadrant it will be tan inverse y by x by the pi if it is fourth quadrant then it is minus tan inverse y by x okay so this way we have to know so depending upon where your coordinates are there your phase is determined accordingly in this cases if you can see here uh, this one uh, it's so what is your phase here in the numerator part it will be tan inverse omega by 2 for denominator if you can see it is tan inverse omega by 1 okay it will minus but here you see your j omega minus 1 so it is situated in which quadrant it is situated in second quadrant right so if you can find then uh, we see that it will be it will be com coming like this tan inverse omega by 2 minus tan inverse omega by 1 minus tan inverse omega by minus 1 but as it is your uh, this uh, coordinate that is omega and minus 1 this is your uh, real part and this is your imaginary part so minus one is your real part omega is your imaginary part so that is situated in a second quadrant so it is as in second quadrant surface will be pi minus tan inverse y by x so after putting this so tan inverse omega by 2 minus tan inverse omega by 1 it will be pi minus tan inverse omega by 1 because this tan inverse omega by 1 can be interpreted as tan pi minus tan inverse omega by 1 so if you can uh, find out then the phase will coming as minus pi plus tan inverse omega by 2 then we'll do the same process we'll vary the value of angular frequency omega from 0 to infinity and we'll take different values of omega starting from 0 uh, let's say omega is equal to 0 then 1 then 2 then 5 10 and infinity so here i'm taking six points okay Similarly, for each value of omega, we have to find out the magnitude and then we have to find out the pitch. Now, when omega is equal to 0, your magnitude is 2. What is your phase? Minus 1. It takes. So, we have to put the value, omega value here in the to determining the magnitude and phase. So, this is your magnitude. So, we have to put the omega value and this is your final phase where you have to find out the phase value. So when you put the value of omega, we can find out the magnitude and phase. Now this is your uh, Nyquist plot. So first, uh, this is uh, this is your polar plot first. This is, if you can see, this is your polar plot. Uh, started from omega is equal to zero to omega is equal to infinity, and uh, this is your polar plot. And uh, what is your Nyquist plot? Nyquist plot is just a mirror image of this polar plot, right? You see, uh, when omega is equal to zero, what is its magnitude? Two, right? So when omega is equal to zero, you see omega, is, your magnitude is two, right? What is the phase here? Phase is minus 180 degree, right? So you see, the phase is minus 180 degree. Now, when omega is equal to one, what is the magnitude? It is 1.1, right? So when omega is equal to one, when omega is equal to 1, then what is the magnitude? It is, your magnitude is 1.1. Magnitude is 1.1. So where is 1? 
your magnitude is 1.1 so your magnitude is 1.1 means somewhere in between here this is your 1.1 and for this one what is your phase minus 153 degree okay so similarly you can find out or other values of angular frequency and can get the points after this after getting the polar plot you can draw the nyquist plot just finding out the mirror image okay now next we have to find out what is the stability of the system whether it is stable or unstable now this can be determined by the relation n is equal to p minus j okay what is n n is the number of encirclement around the point minus one zero okay minus one zero so if you can see there is an encirclement right around the point minus one zero so how many encirclement one right if you can see this that is the encirclement around the point minus one zero somewhere here okay and uh, what is p p the number of poles in the right half of s plane now for this transfer function how many poles in the right half of s plane s is equal to one right so this s is equal to one only one pole is situated in the right half of s plane and uh, this is p and what is z is the number of roots of the characteristic equation but we see that n is equal to 1 and p is equal to 1 so that means your z is equal to also 0 okay so as per the system stability as per nyquist criteria if uh, z is equal to 0 and p is non zero then the system is said to be closed loop closed loop stable and the system is open loop unstable okay so so it is closed loop stable but open loop is not stable okay so this is the criteria of this is the con uh, this is the way to find the stability of the system right so hope uh, all of you understand the concept uh, we took an example how to find how to draw the polar plot, how to draw the Nikos plot, and what is the stability criteria. So this way, we can determine the polar plot and Nikos plot. Thank you.